What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to The Breakdown. This is a series where I analyze subscriber gameplay to help you improve. In today's episode, we're going to be analyzing a team deathmatch gameplay on the map Precinct from XJZang11. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so starting it off, as always, let's have a look at the class you decided to use. We've got the K-Bar Invective with an ELO Sight, Quick Draw, Stock, and Foregrip. For a tactical, we've got a personal radar. For perks, we've got Ghost, Hardline, and Dead Silence. And overall, at first glance, this class looks just fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. One thing I will say though, after watching the gameplay, he doesn't take advantage of this stock attachment at all. And you'll see it throughout the gameplay. I might even mention it a couple times. There are several times where it would have helped him, but he simply just didn't use it. But the class itself, I would say, is just fine. Alright, so hopping into the opening route, it's not the greatest route out there to be taking. It's kind of that 50-50 situation where you just clash head-on with an enemy. But at least here, you do have the better cover. So it's not a terrible route to be taking, but typically I like to push more around the edges of the map for my opening route on Precinct. One thing I will say about that situation, and you see it several times in the gameplay as well, I really like that he recognizes when things aren't going his way in the situation, and he gets out of there. That's something that a lot of people fail to do, and I really like the fact that he does that. Now getting into the next situation he gets himself in, this was an excellent flank and it's great, he comes out behind three enemies, but this is where target prioritization comes in. It's pretty clear right here that he should be shooting at the guy on his left. This is the one that's looking at him, he is definitely the biggest threat to him at this point. Instead, he actually goes for the guy in the middle first who isn't looking at him, he's a pretty easy target to take out, and it does turn out that he wins the gunfight against both of those enemies, but he would have been much better off prioritizing the guy on the left first and then the guy in the middle and if he had time he could go for the third guy as well if that third guy was still alive. Unfortunately this is something that's really difficult to practice. You just have to keep reinforcing it in your mind every time you get into a situation like that. Whether or not it worked out in your favor, always think, did I make the right choice? Did I shoot at the right guy first? Most of the time it's pretty easy to recognize for yourself and as long as you keep reinforcing that in your head, eventually you'll start making those snap decisions automatically. Now coming up in a little bit here, after this next gunfight that he gets into, which he handled quite well, we see another great example of knowing when you are at a disadvantage in a gunfight. He's got a K-Bar, K-Bars aren't the greatest for this range right here, and he doesn't know what the enemy player has, but he does know that it's not really a fight you want to be taking with a K-Bar, so he decides to just get out of that situation. This is something that I don't see enough players doing, and it was an excellent move. Now skipping ahead a little bit to this situation right here, I do want to break this gunfight down. This is a situation where stock would have been a much better bet than jumping. You have these stairs that you can use to your advantage, even though you don't have the height advantage, you definitely have the cover advantage because you can kind of head glitch over the stairs towards this enemy. And assuming that enemy was going to challenge like he did, he's already hurt, you've got such a clear advantage by just head glitching over the stairs using that stock to your advantage and strafing side to side to get your kill and make yourself a hard target to hit. Instead, he decided to try and jump shot, and when you jump shot in this situation, you're completely taking away any advantage that you would have. So I would say even though he won this gunfight, he didn't handle it very well at all. Now skipping ahead again, something I just wanted to talk about that's a little bit more general, I'm not going to break down a very specific situation, just pay attention to his accuracy throughout the gameplay. Now sometimes it's really good, it works out just fine for him and he wins his gunfights very effectively. Other times you'll notice his aim just isn't quite there. I feel like his sensitivity is just a little bit too high for him. And also if you pay close attention to his aim, you'll see he's got very snappy sort of aim. It's not smooth at all. He's not making very fine adjustments with his aim. He's always kind of snapping a little bit. And this is something else that just leads me to believe that his sensitivity is just a little bit too high. So I truly feel that accuracy is definitely something that's holding him back, and I would highly recommend for him to drop his sensitivity by one to two points. You don't have to do anything too extreme, just drop it down a little bit and see how it goes. Obviously there will be a bit of an adjustment time, it will feel weird, but stick with it for several games, and I feel it will definitely improve your accuracy over time. This goes for anyone else out there as well. If you feel like when you're aiming you can't make really fine adjustments to your aim, you're constantly snapping and you have really jerky sort of aim, I would highly recommend just dropping that a couple points and see how it goes after several games. You want to get to that point where you're able to comfortably snap directly onto target, hit your first shot, and then hit every shot following that on a very consistent basis. Obviously, nobody has absolutely perfect aim, 
but this is something you should be always striving for, and it's something that I see is definitely holding him back throughout this gameplay. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's episode of The Breakdown. If you have a gameplay you'd like to submit for a future episode of The Breakdown, all you have to do is send me a link to a raw HD gameplay, no music, no commentary on it or anything like that, just a raw gameplay. Send that to the email address that's in the description below, and eventually I'll have a look at it, and I just might use it for a future episode of this series. Keep in mind, I am not really looking for super above average or amazing gameplays. I know a lot of people, they want to show off their best gameplays, they want to show off their deatomizer strikes, everything like that. I have literally over a hundred gameplays where they're either deatomizer strikes or they're just like completely dominating the enemy team. And there's not that much to learn from those gameplays. Like, yeah, you can pick up some things that they do right. But with these series, I also want to be looking for a few things that are done wrong so I can show examples of what not to do. And in those gameplays, I just don't get that. So sometimes I'm going to be breaking down some of those gameplays, but I've got far too many of those already. So please, if you are going to submit a gameplay, I'm really looking for those more average to somewhat below average gameplays where maybe there's a bit of a struggle involved, you didn't do quite as well as you would like, and you're looking for some tips to improve. So again, if you have that sort of gameplay, send a link to that to the email address in the description below, and I'll have a look at that for a future episode. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.